In this video, we continue our journey learning about the mass spectrometer. We focused in the last video on soft and hard ionization techniques where the compound gains a positive or negative formal charge, in other words, becoming an ion. In this video, what we are going to focus on is the separation of those ions based on their M over Z, their mass to charge ratio. We'll also in this video evaluate the detection of those molecules briefly, the process where the mass to charge values are detected and those values go to a computer for plotting. So focusing on the mass analyzer portion of the mass spectrometer, there are three main types of mass analyzers that we are going to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and list each of those three main types of mass analyzers that we will focus on here. All of these are tied together by the fact that they all separate ions based on different mass to charge ratios. So let's take a look at those three mass analyzers. So walking through our three types of mass analyzers being time of flight, quadrupole, and ion trap, in order and keeping in mind that these all are ways of separating ions based on their mass to charge ratio because once we generate the ions at the first step of the mass spectrometry process we now need to separate those based on the mass to charge ratio so that ultimately we can detect those different mass to charge ratios and plot them as a mass spectrum in the time of flight mass analyzer what is going to happen is that ions will be separated based on their rate of travel through what's referred to as a mass analyzer tube, which is literally a tube, a cylinder, where the ions will travel through that cylinder at different rates depending upon their mass to charge ratio, where the larger the mass to charge ratio, the slower the ion is going to travel. So in our time of flight analyzer, we're going to separate our ions based on their travel through a tube. So it's gonna separate our ions based on their rate of travel through a tube. Separates ions based on rate of travel through a tube. And that particular tube is referred to to be more specific as a so-called mass analyzer tube since we are analyzing the mass to charge ratio of these ions. So generally, conceptually, the larger the mass to charge ratio, the slower the rate of travel of that ion through the tube. We can express this as an equation where we say that T subscript Z, where T subscript Z is the time required to reach the detector in this tube is equal to L subscript Z, which is the length of that mass, mass analyzer tube. The longer the tube, the more time it's going to take the compound to reach the detector. So the length of the tube of that particular instrument times the square root of the mass over the charge, M over Z, times two V subscript Z there. And V subscript Z refers to the so-called acceleration electrostatic potential. That is a value set by the instrument that determines how quickly ions are going to move through this tube. So V over Z is the acceleration electrostatic potential that is going to govern the travel of the ions through this tube. And so we have to have that in the equation. So what we can see here based on this equation, keeping in mind that M over Z in our equation is referring to the mass to charge ratio, is that the time to reach the detector is related directly to the mass to charge ratio in combination with some values that are determined by the parameters of the instrument or values that can be constant, such as the length of the tube and the acceleration electrostatic potential. Both of those terms that we've highlighted in pink there are terms that we would know the values for. And that leaves as well, the time to reach the detector is something that we can measure experimentally. And based on these values that we can either determine experimentally 
i.e. the time to reach the detector, as well as values that we know, such as the length of the tube and the acceleration the electrostatic potential, we can solve for m over z here. And the good news is that when the time of flight mass analyzer completes its task in the mass spectrometry workflow, ultimately at the detector, the detector does this calculation for us. So this is the equation that is used in the computational algorithm to determine ultimately the mass to charge ratio so that that mass to charge ratio can be plotted on a mass spectrum for us. So that's the gist of our time of flight is separating the ions based on how fast or slow they travel through the tube, where the higher the mass to charge ratio, the slower the analyte is going to travel through that tube. The quadrupole mass analyzer is a second type of mass analyzer that we can also use to separate our ions based on their mass to charge ratio to enable their detection in this mass spectrometry experiment. Schematically, our quadrupole, quad meaning four, is going to be a series of four parallel cylindrical rods with an oscillating current applied. So I'm going to do my best here to draw four parallel cylindrical rods, all present within the instrument. So here is our quadrupole diagram. And what is going to happen is that the ions will pass through the interior of this quadrupole, traveling through there. Ultimately, once they reach the other end, they will be headed toward the detector to detect those ions as they exit. And so what's happening here is that the ions are passing through this quadrupole, this array of four parallel cylindrical rods. Within that quadrupole, there is an oscillating current applied. And that oscillating current of the electric field is going to separate compounds based on their mass to charge ratio. So within this quadrupole system, there will be oscillating current and the compounds will be separated based on the oscillation of this resulting electric field. So the gist or summary here in words is that the oscillation of the electric field within the quadrupole separates the compounds based on their mass to charge ratio. Because when we are applying an oscillating electric field, electric fields directly impact ions. And so that oscillating electric field is going to serve to separate compounds based on their mass to charge ratio. So that when those compounds enter the detector, they have been separated by their mass to charge ratio and the detector can analyze that and ultimately um, on your plots on the computer screen will appear your mass to charge ratio spectrum. So that is our quadrupole. Our third type of mass analyzer is similar in principle to the quadrupole in that it is going to have a current applied so that an electric field will ultimately separate compounds based on their mass to charge ratio. So both the quadrupole and the ion trap are relying upon the application of a current. In the ion trap, what happens is rather than having that quadrupole, that set of our four cylindrical parallel rods, instead what there is is a three-dimensional capture box, also referred to as the trap. This box is referred to as a trap, hence we call it the ion trap. So I'm going to draw my not-so-great schematic of this box, this ion trap. And what happens within this trap is that we will have a current applied within the trap. And this current that is applied will separate the ions, which I'm gonna dot, dot, dot out here, based on their mass to charge ratio, so that ultimately what exits the ion trap is separated based on mass to charge ratio and enters the detector 
which detects those different ions that are exiting the instrument. So to put this into words as a summary of the ion trap, similar principle to the quadrupole in that both are relying upon uh, oscillating current in order to separate the ions. The main difference between the ion trap and the quadrupole is that in the ion trap, there's a so-called 3D capture box, AKA the ion trap, where current is applied and it will be at certain currents that certain mass to charge ratios are able to exit that trap. And when they exit that trap and enter the detector, we will ultimately be able to generate the mass spectrum for these compounds. So with that, we have gone over the three types of mass analyzers, time of flight, quadrupole, and ion trap, looking at some of the key features of each of those. Ultimately, at the end of the day, these are all going to serve to separate ions based on the mass to charge ratios so that we can ultimately plot a mass spectrum for an organic molecule.